Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pansite webinar. Let me start the first slide. Topic for discussion is how to manage our enemies. Mission of Pansite. That is my own mission. 4E. For T, entertain. How am I going to entertain you? I'll be sharing real life stories, including my own personal stories. And from the feedback I had obtained in the past, that is the attendees found my stories interesting and entertaining. Second E, educate. To educate another person, one must present facts, evidence, data, and other relevant information. So that's what I'm going to do. So I will be educating you with new information from facts which may be known to you or which may be new for you. Then the third E, enlighten. I'll be posing many thought-provoking questions. They are seeking a response, yes or no, agree or disagree. That will stimulate your thinking. And when you think, when you process that information, that will give you better understanding. Otherwise, most of the time, people, they leave by knowing something without understanding. I just want to make sure that is what you know is not enough. You must understand. Once you understand that one, yes, you are enlightened. The last E, empower. You must have heard this expression, knowledge is power. I always say knowledge itself is not power. Only applied knowledge is power. You know, plenty of people know many things about many things, but they don't apply in their life. A, a classical example, doctors, we know that alcohol is injurious to health and alcohol addiction can cause liver failure and the early death. But I have many doctor friends who became addicted to alcohol and they died before the age of 50. So what the knowledge, that medical knowledge, useless. They never applied that knowledge in their life. So far, do you find this one session interesting? If it is interesting, put in the chat box, why? Type in why, please. I would like to get feedback. Yes, thank you, thank you. Another reason why I ask you to respond, another reason is to make sure that you are physically present. You are listening to me. Otherwise, if it is mic is muted, camera is turned off, I won't know whether you are physically really there. Purpose of today's webinar, know who or what are our enemies. Carefully read that one, who and I put what. How to identify our enemies, how to manage our enemies. And dear friends, yesterday and day for yesterday, I contacted, I made some random calls and I reached to some of my friends and contacts and I asked them, same question, hey, do you have any enemies? The response I got a totally different, interesting. I'm going to share some of those responses. One gentleman, when I asked him, hey, do you have enemies? He said, no. 
I don't have any enemies. And I asked him, okay, how come that you don't have any enemies? And it's not all. My wife passed away three years back. So I'm a widower. Then, I'm retired. So I don't have to go to office and deal with people and have boss, co-workers, conflicts. No. I live in an apartment. So I don't have to have arguments with my neighbors, all those things. And I don't have any children. And I don't even make calls. I, don't, I have only very few friends. And you occasionally call me. That's all. The second gentleman told me, Oh yes, I have an enemy. My neighbor, he is a real pain in the butt. Almost every day, he initiates some kind of an argument, the conflict, this one, that one. I'm tired and sick of that one, guy. Okay? The third person said, Oh yes. My children have become my enemies. Then I said, how come? I'm retired. I have two houses. And then I have some bank balance. And I gave my, I wrote the one house to my elder son, second house to the younger son. Now the younger son doesn't want that house. He wants the other house. The other side said, no, I won't want the other house. So they are fighting between themselves and I am caught in the middle. And both of them want my money also. So when I said that, no, you can get my money after my death. Okay. Now they are turned enemies. So these are some examples. But now you'll be surprised to know they are all talking about physical enemies. I'm going to show you the definition of enemy. Enemy, a person who feels hatred for, nurtures harmful thoughts against, or engages in hostile activities against another. So by that definition, it means another human being. It is external. The second definition part, anything that is capable of causing anything, anything. There are two types of enemies. Internal, invisible. External, visible. There are plenty of books on these internal enemies. I have just shown a few titles. The ego is your enemy. Ego is internal. Your mind is your worst enemy. Defeat the enemy within. Internal enemies. Negative thoughts. I told you I will be sharing some of my own personal stories. The purpose of sharing personal stories is to connect with you. Some of you will be able to, yeah, I also had that kind of a, a, a thought, negative thought in my case. During my younger days, I thought that I'm not good looking, I'm not handsome. And I'm not attractive because my skin color is dark. Because when I used to hear people saying, oh, he's fair skinned, oh, she's fair skinned, oh, he is this one, I said, skin, look at his color, skin color. So I thought that if you, your skin color is not fair, so I immediately started believing that I am inferior. And how did I overcome that one? It took many years. Especially Rajini Khan and Amida Bachchan. They are dark. And I said, no, the skin color has nothing to do with your being attractive or popular. So then I was able to get rid of that negative thought. I would like to make Sanal Kumar as my co-host so that he can 
mute if somebody unintentionally opens the their microphone okay so is this personal story convincing if it is convincing say yes put why please this personal story yes vincent g and indra g yes i suffered a lot because for so many years i was living with constant feeling that i am inferior i am inferior i am not so what can i do what can i do toxic emotions again my own personal story i used to feel angry if somebody insulted me yes then that anger definitely a very strong negative emotion toxic emotion that will disturb my happiness everything and after the age of 28 when i started reading books on that is a self development because in the formal education nothing they don't teach you anything formal education is good for getting a clerical job or some other work for survival if you want to thrive in life self education so after the age of 28 i started reading a lot of self help self development books and i learned okay anger is a strong negative emotion is not going to help in any way it won't hurt the other person but it will hurt the person who is feeling angry then gradually i was able to overcome that one because okay that person insults okay why should i react this way i can simply ignore that person has got the right to have his own opinion that doesn't mean that i have to agree with that one i have to accept that one prejudicial attitude i'll be sharing more of my own personal stories the reason is then that gives the authenticity i used to have a, a negative opinion about people who had tattooing all over the body and with the piercings here and the tongue also piercing and putting a bead in that one i thought they are all for crazy people they are something something is wrong with them you cannot trust them they are bad people that kind of a prejudicial attitude i had everything changed few years back when i was working in a hospital in iowa iowa state and one fine morning in my clinic another doctor also joined this guy name dr anthony ladagana long hair up to the shoulder tattooing different parts of the body the tongue pierced is a doctor believe me he is a doctor pierced with a, a steel bead i thought this guy is crazy i immediately that prejudice i formed an opinion instantly i didn't like him i didn't want to be with him so i wanted to avoid him but this guy on the next day he comes to my office during the lunch time hey venu you they cannot pronounce venu hey venu hey where are you going for your lunch i said i bring my lunch from home and i go and to the canteen to eat that for later okay good i also have brought lunch from my home why not we go together oh my goodness this guy is not leaving me i oh okay we went there and he engaged in a conversation and you had a lot of intellectual curiosity i used the word not idle curiosity 
He asked me a lot about India, about the culture, all those things. And then again, whatever he shared, I thought, okay, this guy is different. He's tattooing and all those things. That is, he is basically not a bad man. And the next couple of weeks, I realized that the patients liked him because he was very respectful to the patients. Pakka gentleman. Uh, so soon we became thick friends. After that, that prejudicial attitude is gone. That is external, has nothing to do with that internal behavior. And to be frank, such people are actually very transparent. People wearing only white shirt and all those things, nice. They are evil, inside black heart. Externally, they appear to be, yeah, very nice, good. No. So that was a lesson I learned. That was something, my internal enemy, that prejudicial attitude. Rigid personality, I'm sure you must have come across people who are very inflexible. They are very rigid, adamant. They are not open-minded, close-minded. People with a closed mind, they will be very rigid. They are not open to new ideas. That is an internal enemy. Negative habits. Negative habits and negative emotions. Fear. There is a very powerful negative emotion. When a person is in fear, that we saw during the COVID phobia. That fear, doing all the irrational things. That phobia became the enemy for many people. Do you agree? If you agree, say yay. Put alphabet yay. That phobia became an enemy. Yes. Indraji, Anil Kumar, yay. Thank you. So that fear is an enemy. Okay, thank you, Ajit Ji. Doubt. Self-doubt. That is an enemy. If you keep on doubting about your own skills, competence, everything, you won't develop self-confidence. You'll be always diffident. If you don't have self-confidence, success in life is virtually impossible. Again, question, do you agree? If you agree, A. Type A. This self-doubt is a pakka big time villain. Dr. Ashi Jain, thank you. Try this one. But millions of people, they are not even aware why they lack self-confidence. They don't know why they don't have that confidence. It is because of doubting their own abilities. Indifference. Indecision procrastination. I don't know what to say. I am, when I was working in the medical college hospital in Trivandrum, there was a, my senior doctor. He was the hospital deputy superintendent. Many issues when we try to share and try to be addressed, always in indecision. We'll do it next week. Yeah, we'll do it next week. Yeah, we'll look into that next week. Next week, next week, next week. Indecision procrastination. I'm sure that you must have seen some people in your own life. And maybe some of you may be also. That is that indecision and protection. I am not. Here because I read a book. I have shared this one in the previous sessions also. Whole brain thinking. Why we are in indecision? Because we don't know how to think. Nobody teaches us how to think. That is very important. If you know how to think, if there is a challenge, if there is adversity, if there is a problem, if you know how to think, then you know that is okay, what is the right decision? What should be done? If you don't know how to think, okay, you are stunned. I don't know. You must have seen some people saying that, hey, what are you going to do? I don't know. 
what are you going to do how are you going to do? i don't know that helplessness hopelessness because of lack of thinking skills my dear friends please read that book on whole brain thinking during the discussion if you want to know more about that one ask me i'll tell you hate worry shyness anxiety in my previous recent talks on how to break mental prisons and how to get peace of mind i talk a lot about anxiety and worry i uploaded those videos you can watch them Indian enemies are six evil passions lust or the sanskrit expression kama anger krodha greed loba loba mani 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 attachment moha Oh, I cannot live without that person. I love her so much. I must get her. Oh, without that one, no. I want to succeed in this one. I must get this job. I must become an IAS officer. All those things. Attachment. Desire. Strong desire. Ego. Mother. Hey. <laughs> I belong to an upper caste. My father was... that person my grandfather was this one i, I my inheritance and everything i, I have post i college i have a phd i ego i'm professor that i am okay you are not okay that is approach a person with high ego thinks that he is okay but everybody else is not okay as an enemy down the road other people will hate you then you will wonder why 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 people don't love me people don't like me jealousy monsteria have i made this simple and clear with the real life examples if i have made it is real simple and easy to understand please type in why Yes, Indraji. Yes, Ramendran. Yes, good. Thank you, Ashi Jain. And I told you the purposes of interaction is I want to monitor. I want to know whether the attendees are able to understand what I am talking about. It may be very clear for me, but it may not be clear for others. Okay, what about the last example? This happened in America, 1998. I think that most of you know what happened. Bill Clinton had sexual relationship with Monica Lewinsky. Then what happened? That lust put in control, internal enemy. That lust. control him he was president of this america lot of everything halla balla and he was about to be impeached about to be impeached and about to be tried for perjury under oath he lied that he didn't have any kind of sexual relationship with that person which was refuted by Monica Lewinsky she saved the jacket which had Clinton's semen on her jacket she didn't give it for dry cleaning so subsequently she delivered that jacket dna analysis yes so that last karma 
internal enemy and soon after he the presence is over he sustained heart attack the tremendous amount of stress in the second half of his presidency because of that scandal he had some i think bypass surgery or standing last comma plenty of examples in india also because I, we don't have the time and i am not sharing all those things don't think this is happening only in america anger is my biggest enemy in life mike tyson do you know who this mike tyson is if you don't know put en i'll explain briefly because i don't uh, uh, roy says yes and uh, indira ji no okay jodi makar no that's fine because don't feel ashamed to say i don't know i don't know many things the secret behind my success in life is if i don't know and say i don't know what is to be ashamed ignorance is not a sin this is mike tyson was a world heavyweight boxing champion and the fact is less he could not control he raped a woman and he was sentenced to 6 years of imprisonment then because of anger he punched people so frequently he got into trouble because he was not able to control those internal enemies anger and lust so he himself is aware now anger is my biggest enemy in life in bengaluru this happened just yesterday online newspaper bengaluru road rage 77 year old beaten to death by shouting at the biker so these days youngsters they are they get into rage they are not able to control anger anger is temporary madness and they beat him and he was killed now those two guys they are not going to see the sunlight soon a big price that's what i the message is whole messages internal enemies they can cost your life cost money your freedom everything if you don't control them so far do you find this session enlightening educating and enlightening yes roy ji yes yes thank you because I, whenever i give a talk i make sure that is my session is unique i use the word unique i don't bring some cut and paste from the books and read them out there are some presenters who are very good readers they show the powerpoint slide read 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 other slide read 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 no and we'll tell them they share the real life stories or share their own personal stories okay is also known to everybody indira gandhi was shot dead anger by bian singh and satwan singh anger they couldn't control that anger they were her personal bodyguards and that bian singh he was soon shot dead because he tried to escape from the custody that satwan singh sentenced to death he was hanged five years later what happened to their families see when they could not control their anger wives widows children everything screwed up what did they accomplish what did they accomplish and because of that what happened some 3000 more than 3000 six were killed in a riot in delhi so anger anger chain reaction it started somewhere and it ended up more than some 3000 people they lost their lives because of the anger of two guys 
It has got a big ripple effect. Border scam case. Lalu Prasad Yadav gets a five-year jail. Rupees 60 lakh fine. This is where that greed. Is the greed over? No. Recently also. You are sentenced that one some more than 20 years back. It has gone deeply into his, maybe in his DNA. Now subsequently when he became the railway minister. Land for job scam. Are you aware of that one? If you are aware, please type in yes. Now again, he is in trouble, deep trouble. Okay, Abhishek ji, Indira ji, not only he, Sarul Kumar, no. Okay, Sarul Kumar ji, now, he was railway minister. Is that okay? If you, somebody wants a job in the railway, there are some property, give the property. So, Lalu Prasad Yadav or his Dinami. Job guaranteed. There is a land for job scam. He and his son, who is now Deputy Chief Minister, Bihar, and his wife, Rabri Devi, greed. Trouble. Hyderabad doctor loses. This is also from yesterday's news. He's a medical doctor. He lost 19.7 lakh in part-time online job fraud. Yeah, they said, okay, just you some, uh, visit some websites and you say like, 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 and some reviews and you will get money. Where's that thinking? You will get 5,000 rupees every day. Huh, 5,000 rupees. Then they asked him to pay some uh, 15,000 rupees initially. Then within... One week, something like that, they put some 20,000 in his account. Yeah, he was thrilled. Then the money, more and more. Eventually, he lost nearly 20 lakhs. When you, greed also clouds the thinking, these strong negative emotions will affect clear thinking and judgment. Emotions are very powerful. I have I made myself clear? If I have made myself clear, please put yes. So, yes, yes, thank you, Indraji, thank you. Emotions. And do we get any training at school or anywhere? No. What about our parents? You must have heard this one. I had the opportunity to witness many times. A father who is very short-tempered and always angry, and uses his body language also to intimidate others, he will tell you, son, I told you several times, you should not use a pointing finger. Don't use pointing finger. So what is he doing? What is his body language? And how can you expect the child to show a different gesture? He simply copies. And here's one interesting uh, story. This happened almost 40 years back when I was working in the medical college hospital. At that time, you know, different subjects we teach in the MBBS. One is anatomy. So in the first year MBBS, one boy, he misbehaved to a faculty in the anatomy department. So she complained to the principal. So the principal asked that boy to come to his office. And within five minutes, he could not. This boy is so arrogant, so angry. And you are thinking that he was right. He didn't do anything wrong. He was in denial. So the principal, my, my dear friend, Dr. Shaji Pravar is here. So he knows that principal's name, Dr. Balraman Nair. So he told the boy, you have to bring your father tomorrow. Only after bringing the father, bring, then only you can get inside the class. So the next day, the boy brought his father. So the father sorry, asked the boy to wait outside. And he tried to have a conversation with his father. Five minutes after the conversation, 
Maravana told, told that father your son is much better than you your son is much better than you so that is what it is our emotional this one shaped by parents grandparents be careful even this greed everything if the father is a, a sub inspector or a tahsildar and he takes a lot of bribe how can he expect that child son to be in the future an ethical or hold moral values that is unrealistic and i am without mentioning the name you know the government again especially tamil nadu yeah father greedy amongst a lot of wealth and his son becomes the minister and his son also is becoming grandson and so on how can you expect them to be everything greed is a strong emotional button i'm soon going to give a talk for the madurai the american college of psychology on emotional buttons Tamil Nadu man dies by suicide day after son kills self over neat result here ego and attachment that ego is he couldn't take that failure his ego was hurt how could i fail what will others think about me because of that ego he committed suicide that boy What about his father? He was so attached to his son that moha. That emotion is moha. He couldn't tolerate that pain. He also committed suicide. I don't know how many of you have read this news. Have you, have you come across this news before, which I shared now? If you have not, put N. Thank you Afila for giving that very positive feedback. Tanul Kumar S Nindra yeah because I'm, I I won't I won't find fault with anybody. Because I use my free time to read different online newspapers to update me. I want to know what is happening in the real world so that in my talks I'll be able to share the real this one not fictional. just a bookish knowledge right? that anybody can share yeah you read a couple of books and you just type that one and ah, this one says that peter says uh, this one says brian uh, says he says and um, steve um, kovi says uh, this one says napoleon hill says so what about your own experience what about the current in the real world now they are written in the 20th century we are living the 21st century authentic information that's why i read a lot of newspapers online Indian woman that is in BBC held for acid attack on ex lover jealousy and anger don't think that only boys they throw acid girls also it is don't compare it to a gender and she was a nurse and when that guy refused to marry her and he decided to marry somebody else that anger and jealousy So, okay, Afila ji, okay, fine. So she threw acid. Obviously, subsequently, all the consequences that internal enemy must have ruined her whole future. The most difficult thing in life is to know yourself. Knowing oneself is the most challenging and difficult thing. Nelson Mandela learn to know yourself to search realistically and regularly the process of your own mind and feelings constantly monitor our thoughts our feelings this is a baptist minister he lived in the i think 19th century beware of no man more than of yourself we carry our worst enemies within us 
Charles Bergen. She is a sexologist, sex educator. Your mind is either your most powerful ally or your worst enemy. The choice is yours. Barbara Carolas. Your worst enemy is yourself. Yumayori Wilson. She is a writer. Ego is the great enemy. Enemy. Ego will hold you back every single time. He is a musician. Helen Keller, world famous personality. Self pity is our worst enemy, and if you yield to it, we can never do anything wise in the world. Down of self confidence, my dear friends. Lack of self confidence is the root cause behind many of the problems. When you don't have the self confidence, you don't succeed. Then you start self pitying. That's not going to help. Self pitying is a real painful emotion or feeling. Negativity is the enemy of creativity. David Lynch is a filmmaker, director, and actor. Many people, they don't do anything creative because they are afraid of criticism. Now, what will others say? And then self-doubting. Is my work, will it be appreciated? Or self-doubting and fear of criticism. I used to, again, suffer from that fear of criticism. My dear friends, long time back, I used to fear if somebody makes a negative comment or something like that. Oh, my goodness. So I should not have tried. I am stupid. That self-talk, I am stupid. I should not have tried that one. I'm a fool. Then when I came across a particular quotation, my hobbies, favorite hobbies, reading and collecting quotations, I have a personal collection of more than 40,000 quotations and many proverbs. They are very empowering. The one quotation by Albert Hubbard, if you are afraid of it, do nothing. Say nothing. And be nothing. So that quotation, yes, for me, I was able to get rid of that internal enemy. Okay, that person criticizes, okay, let him criticize. This guy is not going to fall down. I will do what I think is right and what I like to do. Over. Our greatest enemies the ones we must fight most often are within. Thomas Paine, he was a philosopher and political activist. He also lived in the 19th century. He, has book a, he wrote a book, Common Sense. In the 19th century, it sold more than 150,000 copies. We were not the enemy from without, but enemy within. This is a General MacArthur. That's true, especially in India right now. Right now, we have external enemies, China and Pakistan. But we have more internal enemies with the different religious ideologies, political ideologies. They are most dangerous. Do you agree? If you agree, put why, please, in the chat box. More than the external enemies. Yes, Sanal Kumar, Roy. We have the internal enemies. Every day the country is divided when there is no unity. It is very easy for the external enemies to attack us. Even some political leaders, they go abroad and they say there is no democracy, there is no jurisdiction, everything. Everything is not right, good for the country. Avoid being your own enemy. He is a motivational speaker. Okay, now, how to manage modification of mindset. That is what I said. I modified mindset. Now we need to know what exactly is a mindset. I'm going to share the definition of mindset. 
a particular way of thinking, a set of beliefs and attitudes that shape our character and behavior. I read it once again. Yes, this has to go deep inside your mind. A particular way of thinking, a set of beliefs and attitudes that shape our character and behavior. A real life example I shared, my belief, my skin color is dark, so I'm not attractive. That is the wrong mindset. And fear of criticism, all those things. Mindset, once you change, everything will change. Self-reflection, self-evaluation, self-criticism, we must engage in self-reflection, introspection. Whenever there's a negative thought, stop. Find them some time and critically analyze. Read that book, The Whole Brain Thinking. Then you will know whether that one is rational or irrational. Out. Toxic emotions. Again, why am I angry? Why am I angry? And soon you will show that it is illogical. There is no point in feeling angry. Hey, another person, he has got the freedom to say whatever he wants. And I have the freedom to accept or reject. Okay, I reject. I don't care. That's what the Buddha also taught. Irrational beliefs. Every belief should be examined under a microscope. Whether it is the, what they call it, irrational or rational. Extravagant wants. Ah, I want this car, I want this money, I want this jewelry. Those are all the internal enemies, our desires. Then unrealistic goals. Oh, they want to become IAS officer, IPS officer, but they are academically, they are not bright and they don't have that, that willingness to dedicate enough time and everything, poor reading habits, all these things. The unrealistic goals, plenty of people have unrealistic goals. They simply want to be like the other person. They compare and they want to be like the other person. When they are not able, they feel jealous, that must be an internal enemy that would make them feel miserable. Okay, a couple of talks I gave recently, webinar on the YouTube, how to get mental peace and how to break mental prisons. My dear friends, so far if you like this talk, I would recommend, please watch those videos. Upcoming talks, how to manage our enemies, part two. In the next session, I'll be talking about external enemies and how to manage disease phobia. Plenty of people are suffering from imaginary diseases. Jodi Makarji is there and plenty of other people. Malia Pillai, am I right? If I am right, put yes. Imaginary diseases. Plenty of people. And it is good for the doctors. Hospitals. They are making a lot of money because of the imaginary fear. They get all unnecessary CT scan, MRI scan, this scan, this lab and everything. The hospitals, corporate sector hospitals are minting millions. So my talk may help you if some people are really interested in getting rid of the disease phobia. Now we have six more minutes, so I can, before I stop the recording, now still we are recording. I'll be able to entertain a couple of questions or a couple of thoughts, but exactly at nine o'clock, I will stop the recording, but we will continue, we can continue the discussion even after that one. So right now, Jodi Makarji, go ahead and just ask your question or share your thoughts. Sir, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for this wonderful session. Another question I have is that if we conquer our internal enemies, every person has some internal enemies. If we conquer them, 
then i don't think it will be much difficult to manage the external enemies because everyone has both of these enemies internal as well as external even if you acquire the buddha like state there will be always someone to throw a stone at you so matlab ki uh, if we conquer the internal enemies my question is i don't think external will uh, affect us succeed in affecting uh, jodi ji you are absolutely right because some of these external enemies are the products of our internal enemies the internal enemies are responsible for creating external enemies but even then even if you conquer everything there are some people they are bent upon picking fight with you you cannot 100% but you can significantly that is a reduce the number of external enemies once they know that you are not upset by by their criticisms after some time they will stop criticizing you they get in immediate pressure if you lose your temper that is what they want to see they want to see you angry but when they see you are indifferent now okay all right then they don't get that pressure do you follow me so that is how you demotivate them otherwise if you get angry you are motivated them to again and again am i right jodi ji yes sir yes i agree they yes. get the energy they get the power from you exactly like, don't dracula. give them dracula gets the power by sucking the blood so they get the power and energy from you if yes. you don't give them that energy they will show off themselves exactly okay dr shaji prabhar okay your comments i hope that is your comments will be pertaining to this topic and again yes. something concrete and something your own experience based something yes okay thank you rano for giving me the chance see i used to develop some bad beliefs about someone those who over i had feeling as not an enemy but somehow i don't like it. once you talk to them matter may be different matter may be whatever may be the matter they have become my friends i have enemies not that i don't get to interact with them i can tell you one example you know i am a popular practicing neurologist in tirana i have examined or under my care was there five chief ministers of care the present chief minister was supposed to be the most arrogant man that has been told to any person anybody here two times i have met him not for my personal benefit but for an organization in english then two other former mayors of tirandon came to me shaji shaji time time we have alum just less than 2 minutes come to the point okay he was so kind enough to listen what you are telling and he has agreed for both meetings he has come in a proper time and delivered his nervous i have i thought he was my enemy he don't that but he has so if you want you can make enemy you have then provide it you interact with them as you have said an example of a man with a long hair and <laughs> tattooing and all see that's not physical appearances but once you open up your mind and he gave at last he gave an advice doctor don't go for all this thing you do your work and get satisfied with your work if you are happy with that work continue with that work don't go for this virtual alternative they will tune you so they will that you become their enemy at some time okay uh, thank you uh, thank you shaji ji right now the time is going to be 9 o'clock because i teach time management if i'm not able to follow the time management then i'll be a hypocrite i'll be just a preacher not a practitioner so i'm going to stop the recording but 
I will be available. This discussion will go on. Sometimes it may last for 20 minutes, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. During the discussion, you will be able to get more information. If there some people ask some good questions like Jodi ji and some experience like Dr. Shaji, that will be more interesting. So, thank you all for actively participating in the discussion, in the session. And let us meet next week, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Same link. Topics will be different. I'm going to stop the recording.